Welcome to The Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh. Doug, of course, an advisor with Strategic Wealth Partners, where they have decades of experience under one roof helping folks just like you with retirement plans here in the Independence, Cleveland, and Northeast Ohio area. Also with us, of course, an investment strategist with Strategic Wealth Partners. That would be Luke Lloyd. I'm Mark Elliott. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the markets. We're going to talk about the stimulus, relief packages, all the craziness going on in the world. And Doug and Luke are here to fix it all. Is that correct? Happy days are here again. The skies above are clear again. Oh my God, the market's up. Everyone's excited. It seems like every day it's up now. You know, it felt like three weeks ago, every day was down, but now it's up every day. The, uh, it's, you know what, everything's amazing. I guess everything's back to normal. It I, certainly feels that way. Oh man, you know. But is that true? Are we at an all time high? Uh, not an all-time high yet, oh, but man. we could be, who knows, two weeks from now, if the way this continues to go, we could be easily at all-time highs. Hey, Mark, where do you think we were two weeks ago, market-wise? Well, I know at one point the Dow was a little over 29. Then after the 30-day crash, basically, we went down to about 18-something. Now it's right hovering between that 24, 24, 5 area, so we're still not back to where we were back in January. No, we're way below where we were in January, but I'm asking, where do you think we were two weeks ago? Two weeks ago compared to um, today. I'll, 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 I don't know. Say a we're, 10 or 15 no, no, hold on. No, we were exactly where we are today. So no, that's... It got up and then it went down in between. Right. So my point being is happy times aren't here again. Maybe some people are excited to be out. You know, um, we've seen all the um, nervous folks reporting on Facebook. Look at all these people at Town Hall and all these other places eating and they're congregating. There's too many people in one spot getting excited. Oh man, there's 20 people on an 18 person deck. We need to call the police. Um, so I, I wouldn't say happy times are here again um, or happy days is the word, but uh, it, that's it's interesting. Like, you know, Jerome Powell gets on the, um, you know, interweb and basically says, um, we still have more ammunition and because he has uh this ability to move markets by saying we have more ammunition um you've seen what the markets did but it's not like we're going back to where we were um we're still down significantly i mean are we still down 17 percent from our all-time highs yeah where we currently are yeah. so again you don't want to start um starting to feel as if um, I guess hey, everything's okay. I don't have to make any changes. I can just kind of set it and forget it and kick that can down the road. And if I get a retirement notice tomorrow, it's going to be okay, right? I mean, what's your take, Luke? I mean, it all comes down to investor sentiment, right? Yeah. Like you said, things feel really comfortable right now. Hmm. And it tends, when we tend to feel this way, it tends to signal that we're close to a top. But here's the thing. We talked about the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, um, going on to 60 Minutes, you know, acting pretty bullish, saying that they have a lot more ammunition. They can do a lot of different things. 60 Minutes. I'm glad you said it because I couldn't w remember. That's why I was like, I'm the interweb. Yeah, 60 Minutes. Yeah, he just went on, he just went on and talked about that. He, he and, was on uh, Facebook. Right. He, he's on a lot of different things, right? But um, he said they have a lot of different you know, ammunition they can still use. And what he's talking about that, he's talking about just printing more money. You know, and, and it seems like at this point, the Federal Reserve can just print money till no end. And yes, they can do that, but there's going to be repercussions down the road. So really, you have to weigh the option. You know, should we bail everybody out right now and just print more money? Or should we let some things um, maybe fail and maybe not pay for it down the road? I mean, that's kind of what they're balancing right now. Well, from my understanding is they're going to be giving everyone $2,000, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, more it? stimulus yeah, down the road. I mean, no, no, another is check. Two, I, I got a brain cramp. Is it $2,000 a month? Per, yeah, well, that's per, what Democrats per, want to give uh, a lot per, of money per month. Per individual? Yep. Like up to 200000 you know, like something like absurd. Well, the problem that we're facing is, right, we see this huge unemployment raise, right, or, or 30 million plus mm -hmm. unemployed, and we have to sustain their payments until they get back in employment, right? And that's what the Democrats and Republicans right now are facing in Congress is or fighting about, you know, what's going to happen down the road? What's the best way to go about it? You know, we're not talking politics here, but, you know, what is the best solution down the road? It's, because an, it's an election year. They want to give away money. I mean, Mark, if someone's going to offer you, you know, and your family thousands of dollars a month to sit at home, are you going to take it? Um, I accepted the twelve hundred dollars earlier. No, so I'm talking yes, about I these these would. these fantasy stimulus packages, where if every person or every of the hundred and fifty million working employees um, received just the one month of it, it would cost you know three hundred or four hundred billion dollars. Mm -hmm. 
if it lasted for six months, they're estimating close to $2 trillion just in giving that money away. And if if that happens, I was just listening to uh, Mark Tepper, the president of our company. I was listening to a couple of his podcasts and um, shows prior to this. I was actually live in the studio with him. And he was talking about how um, if you basically give away this money to individuals, which I understand there's a lot of people in need, um, the actual impact on mid mid-sized companies, small companies that can no longer find employees. So it's actually has like, um, it's a double-edged sword. You know, we're basically creating money out of the sky, giving it away, and then not incentivizing people to work. They're just saying, hey, here's a bunch of money, um, have fun, but in the meantime, um, people are no longer compelled to go to work because they're making twice the amount of money sitting at home. So how does that impact our yeah, because economy? because if unemployment, if you typically get, what, four or $500 a, mo- a week for unemployment, so let's just say five to make it easy, so that's 2000 a month, then they added 600 extra per week for the next, what, through July anyway? Yeah, and they're trying to extend so you're through. Just... Almost, you more than doubled your money. I mean, it's, yeah, why would you go back and take a, you know, a, a minimum wage job when you're making more just staying at home? I'm going to tell you what right now. With the amount of money they're talking about, I might just quit and go home and, like, make, <laughs> make pies for a living. I, th- I think it's you had to take a no, step no, back. No, 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 no. I'm making pies. Well, I mean, they're what kind talk, of pies? They're is the talking real like ten grand a month uh, for a family of five. I might adopt two more kids and make pies. Well, I, if, why would I? Why would I go to work? Well, the thing is, it's not it's not sustainable over the long term. Right? I, you mean I mean, to tell me creating another two trillion dollars out of thin air doesn't devalue the dollar and it doesn't do anything it, crazy it to the economy? It, we it already hurt have businesses. We already, we already have a huge amount of debt, right? Wow. So taxes really? probably twenty six trillion. Yeah, something like more, that. Probably more than that. Mm. Now with the printing of more money, right? Perhaps so, even more. Exactly. So we have to, you know, as a country, as you know, as stimulus comes up or uh, policy comes up in the future, uh-huh. you know, tax is probably going to get raised. Right. Inflation has not been an issue over the past. Taxes 10, 20 are going to go up. They, they, Should we? Plan I'm telling for you, that? they aren't going down. <laughs> Should we plan for taxes going up? That's something you definitely have oh, to account how for. How terrific your would it be for people to get ready to retire? Um, they're going to get that big lump sum or they're going to, you know, retire and they need to maintain that lifestyle. And gosh, taxes are going to go up 20 percent, 25 percent. I mean, you know, you might be in a 22 percent bracket now, but the good old government's making money, you know, appear out of the thin air. And now all of a sudden you're going to be paying 30 percent in taxes in retirement. And I thought taxes go down when you retire. That would be nice. That would oh. make our plans work a lot better. They're going it? up. They're going up. And then what if inflation? Well, you know, if you guys... I don't know if you guys have ever done it. You go to usdebtclock.org and you can follow along with, there's a lot of red and the money keeps trickling, you know, obviously going the wrong direction farther into debt, but there's some green, there's some positives in there as well. There but is. But last week when I looked at the US debt clock and you could go back to 2008, we were a little over 10 trillion in debt as a nation. And then you go to today, we're a little over 25 trillion in debt. Last week they projected by 2024, we'd be just over 42 trillion. So I checked it today to see what would be different. Uh, it added another trillion. We're now projected in 2024 to be a little over 43 trillion in debt. So it's it's going up uh, rather quickly. Well, if you take a look to what's happening, we have the really low interest rates too. So people are borrowing a lot of money at the same time because mm-hmm. they're trying to have quantitative easing. You know, the cost of borrowing being cheap. So I mean, that's why we're just continuing to add to the debt, and it's just not sustainable over the long term. So yeah, we just talked about taxes going up, but the other issue is we haven't seen inflation issues over the past you know 10, 20 years. In- but what in- if inflation is 1.4 percent? Right. So what Currently. if we're pumping all this money into the system and we come out of, out of this pretty strong and then there's huge demand for goods and services, you know, prices start to skyrocket on certain industries. We start to see inflation maybe jump from 1.4% to 4, 5, 6% mm-hmm. down the road 10 years from now when you're approaching retirement or you're in retirement. That has a huge impact on your financial plan. So what, is, what does the Fed normally do when they want to temper inflation? Well, they'll have to raise interest rates again, but they can't raise interest rates now because right, right, that would hurt right, the economy. Right. Stocks would drop another 30, 40 percent. Right, right, right. So that's that's one of the issues that we have is we're, we we do kind of run out of we're, we're cornering ourselves. And Powell also said he didn't want to have negative interest rates and negative interest rates. I mean, that gets really complicated. The whole system, people would be very confused at what's happening when you're getting paid basically to uh, part borrow money. I mean, that's a pretty crazy uh, idea that, you know, that, that they're thinking about. But Powell said on 60 Minutes that they're not thinking about doing that. But, you know, what else do they have in their back pocket really besides printing more money? They're going to print money. Exactly. Are you going to take that money? I'm not taking the money. You're going to take that money. I probably won't get money. Mark's going to take that money. <laughs> 
Mark 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 took his first twelve hundred. He goes, I, I want some more of that. Yeah. Well. I right, mean, a lot I, of people will take free money, right? I mean, it's what you, I mean, what else can you do? You're gonna be in a bad situation if you don't. But the thing I is, I wish I could get some free money. People don't understand that a lot of the people that are, you know, just happy about receiving this stimulus right. is that they're probably gonna be paying it back in the future through other means, like the taxes, right? So if they get twelve hundred bucks now, let's say they get, they're happy about twelve hundred bucks, they're probably gonna pay two thousand dollars in taxes additionally over the next twenty years because of this. If you kind of amortize that over a certain amount of time, that's something you really have to think about when you. Um, um, you have to think of every variable that's happening right now in the economy. No. So you mean to tell me again, we're, we should be planning? You should always be planning for we the future. We should be organized. You have to be organized. We shouldn't just be sitting in some mutual funds and crossing our fingers and hoping for the best. So a lot of people are doing and they're going to oh, be in a bad man. situation coming out of this. If, if you're kind of sitting back and you're wondering right now what we're talking about, what we're talking about is going to trg.swpconnect.com and finding a time for us to get together and talk about your current circumstances. During that meeting, we're going to spend some time figuring out how to get you to where you want to go. Again, it's a 15-minute uh, phone call, maybe a half-hour Zoom meeting, whatever's comfortable for you. And from there, we'll put together a wealth management analysis that will let you know what's good, what's bad, and what definitely can be improved upon. But again, you got to go to trg.swpconnect.com or give me a call at 216-800-9890 now. Doug Harbaugh, Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. I'm Mark L.A. Glander with us today for the Retirement Guys. And, you know, you, you talk about all of this. Here's the challenge, Luke, too, as well. You're talking about, well, hey, we're, you know, over the next 20 years, we're probably going to pay $2,000 more in taxes. That $1,200, if I gave that $1,200 back, it wouldn't make a dent. So I might as well take that money. But that's really the challenge that everybody's probably looking at is that the country right now is crazy. Uh, people trying to go back to work, open their business, and then people are, you know, c companies are opening that are not supposed to open, and then uh, we're going to have a lawsuit here, lawsuits, lawsuits all over the country. This is a really crazy time, and I think a lot of people, Doug, and I think you would agree, that when people are confused about what's going to happen down the road, they tend to do nothing. We procrastinate. This might be the worst time to sit back and do nothing. Well, and that, and that's why, or no? you know, I know like, that's why I was singing that song, Happy days are here again at the beginning. And I have a better singing voice than that. I was just goofing around. Trust me. I'm, you know, people pay me oh, for it. Oh, you sounded good. I have the voice of an angel. You know, it's a voice of a generation. I typically don't share it. That's why I kind of simplified my singing voice. I didn't want people to faint, you know, especially while they're driving. That wouldn't be good. I just tried the guitar. I can't <clears> sing. <throat> okay. No, um, you definitely shouldn't kick the can down the road. And that's, you know, if you hear my commercials throughout the week, um, basically saying that, you know, again, sitting in that mutual fund portfolio and or some, buying some random annuity because some guy told you that the stock market is like playing blackjack is not the way to go. Again, you need to be more sophisticated, you know, for the money that you've worked 20, 30, 40 years for. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, being sophisticated does not include putting 100% of your money in an annuity. It also doesn't mean it's putting 100% of your money into stocks. But there is a specific method, there's a combination and permutation of assets, investments that you need based on your circumstances in order to succeed, right? So again, simplifying it, oh, because I'm older, I should just be in bonds. Wrong. You know, you know, maybe you do need some equity exposure or stocks. Again, I don't want to, you know, use multiple terms here, but, you know, you have to have a blend that gives you the growth rate so you don't run out of money. Right? right? We can't just wing it anymore and hope for the best. And again, it still drives me nuts that people prey on other people's fears and say, hey, if you're, if you're, if you're in the market, it's like playing, playing at a casino table and you're risking your life. That's a lie. That is an absolute lie. And it's not even fair that people can get on different you know, st stations or channels or whatever and say these things to you because um, it's just not true. People need balance. Balance is key. I'm not talking about hitting a home run. I'm talking about hitting for average, hitting the average that you need as an individual and kicking that can down the road because your advisor sent you cookies and you're not looking at other options shouldn't be like a, a good solution for you. Again, you've worked hard for what you have and you should really, really seek additional opinions, whether it's from me or someone else. And Mark, like you said, you know, the $1,200, if you get it and you're giving it back would not make a dent. Yes. I mean, the thing is, 
us as in individuals cannot change economic policy, right? Whatever, you know, the government decides to do with policy or the Federal Reserve decides to do, that's what that's on them, right? We can we can't change that. So us as individuals, what we can do, though, is plan around what's happening and try to plan for the future. And that all comes down to not kicking the can down the road and making sure that you make those important decisions now rather than later when it's already too late. Right. Because if it's too late, we'll have a blue Christmas. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we don't want a blue Christmas. You know, we're both wearing blue shirts in here. And I'm just, that's what I'm like, all oh, I have a blue. <laughs> Jeez, we're going back to the 60s and 70s, you know, talking about happy days. You know, happy it's like day, the show like, back in the day, the I fonts, think that's right? that's like the 30s. That's from the Great Depression. Maybe the song, but I'm talking about the show, the <laughs> well, TV show. I wasn't talking about happy days at TV show. I was talking about happy days are here again. Yeah, I yeah. think that's from like the 30s. I got you. <laughs> Or Barbara Streisand, so, whoever did it. If you want to, if you want to find out more, you can go to the website trg.swpconnect.com. Trg.swpconnect.com. You can always call Doug and the team at Strategic Wealth Partners 216-800-9890. No cost for this 15, 20 minute phone call or even a Zoom meeting, whatever you'd prefer. 216-800-9890. We're talking about the markets. We're talking about taxes. We're going to talk a little bit though about some of the free tools on that website I just gave you, trg.swpconnect.com. Wealthalyze, Portfolio X-Ray. What in the world is all that? Doug and Luke will clue us in right after this. This is The Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. Welcome back to The Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. I'm Mark Elliott. Uh, you can always go to the website, trg.swpconnect.com to find out more, trg.swpconnect.com. You can always give the team a call if you have questions or concerns, 15, 20-minute phone call, maybe a Zoom meeting, and, and clearly at some point, and even now, you can pop in and see the team and all the social distancing and the sanitizing and all of that is being done, 216 800 9890. And we went to the break because we always tell people that, Doug, you know, they can go to trg.swpconnect.com. And I thought I should go there, see what's happening. Well, I found that there are two free tools on this website. One is called Wealthalyze. Another is called the Portfolio X-Ray. Can you two discuss that and tell me what it is and why I can get some invaluable feedback? Well, I will start with the uh, Portfolio X-Ray. So what the Portfolio X-Ray is, is it's a form that you can fill out and submit your individual stock holdings or mutual funds, whatever it is that you hold in your portfolio. And what our investment team will do here is take a look at, you know, that stock's uh, management team. You know, how well is that company's management team performing? Are they reliable? Do they have a gro good growth story behind the company? And then also, is it at a reasonable valuation? So we'll take a score, you know, A through F and score each one of those for every holding in your portfolio. It just gives you a good idea of what you will hold, what you own, and where it's going in the future. Bravo. Now okay, do wealth so that's portfolio X, right? Yeah, so wealth allies also is another form you can fill out with questions on it. Um, it will give you a score um, based on your you know, risk tolerance, your profile, whatever, you know, all the different questions that go into your financial situation, your, all the variables that go into your financial plan. And you fill that out and it will give you a good score that will tell you where you're at in the spectrum. If you're um, you know, risky, if you're um, conservative mix, or mix, you know, where, where are you going in the future as well? So they're two good tools to really plan around the future for your individual situation. And it gives a good idea of where, um, you know, what needs improvement. And, you know, if you do want to have that discussion, with Doug, uh, where you can head in conversation with that. 216-800-9890. 216-800-9890. You know, Doug, when you think about it, and we've talked about this before, that most people don't realize the amount of risk they're taking in a portfolio. This wealth lies on your website, trg.swpconnect.com, or the portfolio x-ray. Those are just trying to open your eyes a little bit to give you a little bit clearer picture of what you actually have. Right. Right. Because most of us just have 401ks or IRAs don't even really know what's in them. Right. No. And, and it just it's kind of a the tip of the iceberg as to begin to kind of explore where, like, as I've said in the past, the leaks in the plumbing. Um, we want to figure out, you know, again, retirement planning per se is more complicated than just being an investment advisor to people. You know, we also have to plan for taxes. We have to plan for future inflation. We have to plan for health care costs, long term care. We have to plan, plan for all these different areas and then have an appropriate investment mix for that. Now, with that being said, since uh, the world is changing, investments are changing, you also have to be nimble. And what I mean by nimble is you have to be flexible in your investments. And we do know that mutual funds typically are not flexible. 
being that you can't just individually remove holdings within that. You have to wait for the fund manager to make those changes. And that's a problem due to the fact that they're in such large positions that they can actually royal the market by moving out of certain um, positions too quickly. So some of these guys might not move as fast as you need as a consumer, um, whereas if you had individualized specific approaches to your, your certain circumstances, you could be more nimble and flexible when it comes to your investments. And that's when we're talking about doing things differently. You're not just holding these mutual funds, crossing your fingers and going, I hope I'm gonna win. Life's gonna be good. That's not the case. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be in positions that you should be able to know that your advisor is actively watching it on a day-to-day -day basis. He can tell you why you're in those holdings, what those holdings do, what their predicted revenue is, and that when things change, or we get an earnings call that's not good, without emotion, we move on from that company at the end. And we put the money either to work or it sits in cash or in a bond equivalent waiting for a new opportunity to invest. That's how investing should work for you today. Not just sitting in some annuity because some guy told you that the market's like blackjack or buying some mutual fund again and crossing your fingers and hoping for the best. Yeah, and you were hitting on the actively managed portion of the mutual funds as well. One thing to keep in mind also is there there are passive mutual funds that don't have an active manager that's keeping up with the individual holdings in the portfolio. And a lot of people have these passively managed funds or ETFs and they just hold the same stuff all the time. So if you just have that passive management, there is no way that you're adding value to your portfolio, especially in a situation that's currently happening, like the coronavirus, where when certain sectors are performing better than others. Right. No, it's it's a, it's a huge problem, you know. And again, as we've talked historically, the last 12 years, the market has run passively and passive investing has been more successful than active management. But the prior year, 10 years before that, active trounced passive. So again, if we're going into another economic world where we're going to see large volatility in companies, we're going to see volatility across multiple sectors. So uh, not in just housing, um, but then we're looking at the travel industry. We're looking at real estate as when it comes to office space. We're going to have lots of changes to all these different um, market sectors that you need to be able to proactively be able to move out of these positions. We have to understand what volatility is. It's uncertainty. You know, uncertainty drives volatility. So if we're moving into a very uncertain environment about the future, mm -hmm. that's what you're hitting on. It's even more important now than ever for you to have that active management, to have that kind of style in your portfolio to make sure that you come out of this stronger than before. I mean, because there are uncertain times ahead. Who mm -hmm. knows what's going to, we don't even know what's going to happen in the next two to three months. Who, how are we supposed to know what's going to happen in one year or two years? We have to be nimble. We have to evolve mm -hmm. with the changing information. And that's why it's so important to be active and not just let things go um, as they are. Right, right. Mark? But you know, if you think about it, and this is coming from me that doesn't work in the financial world. Mm -hmm. I, I'm lucky that I have the opportunity to talk with you guys every single week. So I'm gaining knowledge. I'm oh, 60, so that's I'm sweet. know this stuff, and I don't. Yes, I know. I thought I'd throw you a little. That's exciting. <laughs> we, we know someone. But, you know, you, did I pay you to say that? No, no, I'm waiting for that check still. All right, so I'll send you $5. But if you think about it, yeah, you think about it though, I don't know enough to, and we're kind of in this do it yourself world HGTV. Hey, I want to redo my bathroom. I want to redo my backyard. I'm mm -hmm. going to build a porch, a screened in porch. I'm going to put a pool in. I'm going to go out and dig it with my shovel. I mean, it's a do it yourself era that we're in right now. And to me, I don't know anything about this stuff. I've always just had a job. There's a 401k. Okay, do whatever you think. And I don't know enough. That's where I think that most of us are missing the boat and we're trying to do it ourselves. We might have somebody, you know, a stockbroker helping us grow our money, which is great, but that is not retirement planning. That's a totally different world. There are so many financial advisors that do so many different things that I think it's important. We don't go to the pediatric doctor. You know, you're not going to the same doctor your, your daughter Olivia is going to. She's two and a half years old. No, but I told you, you I change. would. <laughs> I know you would because you like her. Yeah. I like but Dr. Olivia. You think, yeah. <laughs> But you think about it, we change doctors as we go, mm -hmm. and I don't think people think about, ooh, I should probably go to somebody that's gonna help me with my distribution as opposed to my accumulation, but you're gonna help still with accumulation even though while you're helping us in distribution, this gets so complicated. I, why don't people come and seek advice in this area or is it because we just don't want to pay for anything regardless of how the value of it is? No, they do, but I think a lot of people fear change. 
so I mean, I think with the respect to the amount of people that um, actually even seek out any kind of free secondary opinion um, or f second um, consultation. Um, I mean, a few times, you know, I'll meet with new um, prospects uh, and they'll say, hey, you know, um, I want to interview you and three other guys. Okay, so interview, you know, me and some other guys. I'm going to interview you and, you know, compile your thoughts and we'll get back together after you've interviewed everyone and figure out if it makes sense for us to work, you know, as a team. Hey, Mark, let me ask you, when you do something for the first time, how well do you do it? Uh, not very good. Oh, come on. This guy was a lefty. Oh, hey, I was he a righty knuckleballer. He was, he was a left-hander. I'm still left-hander. This guy was a le lefty a pitcher, right, in the Dodgers system, yep. right? After that, then he became a quarterback. Yep. I mean, this guy was a stud. So probably everything you ever did when you were a kid, Mark, I don't want to hear about it, except for that one time when you busted the screen door and your mom hollered at you. But other than that, I mean – you know, this guy probably woke up every day, and he, he probably was born handsome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I'm jealous he's a lefty because, like, like I said, I was a Division three pitcher at Muskingum University. Shout out to the Muskies. But um, here's the thing. When you do something for the first time, anything that you do for the first time is not your best. So you have to think about anything that you do that you – do hire maybe that specialist to make sure that you are getting the best mm -hmm. attention in the fine detail of whether it's your financial plan or anything you do in life. Because if you mess this up, you don't, you can't go back on it. You can't go back and change something that you messed up in your financial plan or your financial situation because, you know, time is the most valuable asset. So you have to keep that in mind. And that's why you have to make sure things are set up correctly for you to come out stronger in the future. Correct. You got anything else? That's why I think it's such a, a <laughs> challenge for for a lot of people that, you know, they don't work in the financial world. They don't know. They they know, hey, their their parents said, you know, just you need to talk to this person. They helped me with my retirement. Of course, I had a pension. I had Social Security. I had double-digit interest rates in the bank in the late 70s and 80s when I retired if I was like my grandparents. Right. I don't have that. Right. No, things have so changed. That's the Retirement is so much different today. Right. And, and again, a lot, of, a lot of the businesses and what I found in general is, um, someone works with their cousin, their neighbor, depending on the neighborhood you grew up in, depending how big the city is, you know, everyone works with one guy, right? So in some of our more rural markets, you know, there's like one advisor in town. And I notice when I go into those markets, um, Ashland, for example, or Medina, there's um, people um, that work with one guy. And I see the same thing across everybody who comes into my office. They hold the same proprietary funds. They hold the same asset mix. There's no difference from one person to the next. I, I find it fascinating that people don't even realize that they should check these things. And some people are using the same advisors that their parents or grandparents right. use, like you said. So they're on the second or third generation of the so they think firm that's they're what at. they're supposed to do. So exactly, but are they getting you know the best personal advice for no. the situation if they're on their kids or grandkids are now running the firm? So they didn't get the same exact people that was working with their grandparents and parents. I, so I can promise you, they're not. Exactly. And, and, I mean, and look, and you don't want to, and that's why you never name other places. But again, I go into a community, I open an office in that area. And I have 10 people come in and eight of those people have the same advisor. Why don't eight of those people have the same asset mix? Why do all their investments look exactly the same? They shouldn't. Right. And it's because that bank sells what that bank does. This is why open infrastructure fiduciaries. And what I mean by that is an open infrastructure fiduciary can utilize almost any investment available to them. Right. Except for things that are proprietary. Ooh, sounds so exciting. But at the end of the day, when you can work with a fiduciary that by law, by definition, has to do what's in your best legal interest, they're going to seek out the best investments available to you rather than just selling what corporate tells them to sell. And that's why, again, when I go in, I meet with 10 people and eight of them have the same investment portfolios. That's concerning. And this is why you should always seek out additional information to see how you're doing. And that's why I want you to call me at 216-800-9890 or go to trg.swpconnect.com and set up a meeting with me now. Let me put together that portfolio x-ray for you so you can see where you actually stand. Again, that's trg.swpconnect.com or 216-800-9890. 
Doug Harbaugh is a chartered retirement planning counselor and wealth advisor at Strategic Wealth Partners. Luke Lloyd is an investment strategist with Strategic Wealth Partners. And if you go to that website, we were just talking about when we started this segment, talking about that you can actually begin your assessment, whether it's wealth allies, when wealth, wealth allies simply measures how effectively you're managing your wealth. And then the portfolio x-ray measures the strength of your stock portfolio by scoring your top 10 stock holdings in three critical categories. You can do those things for free just by going to that website. Also on the website, trg.swpconnect.com, you can book an appointment with Doug right there. That's easy as well. We got more with the retirement guys, Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners right after this. You can always go to find out more, trg.swpconnect.com, trg.swpconnect.com. There's a couple things you can do on there for free to find out more about where your portfolio and how it stacks up. Uh, you can also book an appointment with Doug right there on, on the website as well, trg.swpconnect.com. I want to go back to where you were at the end of the last segment, Doug. And you got it fired up, which is kind of exciting because usually you're so mild-mannered and you no, don't really yeah. have an opinion about anything. <laughs> no opinion. So right. I was excited about that. But I would like for you and Luke to discuss, because I think this is part of the challenge that people like me that don't work in the financial world have in trying to you know, disseminate and figure out all the different things that financial advisors, we think they're all the same. It's like not all cars are Chevys, not all cars are Fords, right? They're different. And so in the financial world, there's a lot of difference of what people specialize in, if you will. So you were going that in this certain area, you would find eight out of the 10 retirement plans were all the same because it depended on whom they came from, right? And yours, and Luke, when you guys sat down with people, if you had 10 clients, you would have 10 different plans because everybody's situation is unique to them. Can you talk about the difference between being independent where you shop the market or you're captive and you have those proprietary tools you were talking about? Because captive agents typically have to go and keep their employers happy, then their clients happy, independent advisors typically are just all about the client. Right. So, so let's define, let's, de let, let's define two different things here. So you have a retirement plan and then you have an investment plan basically, right? The investment plan directly uh, coordinates with the retirement plan, right? The retirement plan tells the investment right. plan what it needs to do. Right. So uh, I think a lot of people get things confused and sometimes people think that, oh, well, a plan is just some advice. You know, um, he's just telling me what we're going to do. And here's the path and we're going to sit back. And I, I'm here to tell you that that is not how a plan works. A, a proper retirement plan takes time. It takes probably an average of 20 hours for me to construct with the help of multiple employees in order to put it together correctly. It is based on cash flows. It is based on what is happening today. It doesn't use rear looking numbers it use uses forward looking numbers to make sure that we are estimating the appropriate inflation rates of return costs for health insurance long-term care housing maintenance car purchases vacations tithing everything you can think of and then it does a probability analysis against your investments to figure out how many times you succeed from a score of zero to 100 like you're in school Okay, and a lot of advisors out there will use 70 as a baseline score saying, well, that's a passing grade. And they will give you a high five and say, good luck. These are also the same advisors who do not use forward looking projections. They will use historical numbers and they will give you a rate of return on this retirement plan that isn't necessarily true, right? So, and what I mean by that is if they apply a nine, 10% rate of return on your investments, and then you do your spending over time on these cash flows, it's gonna look like you never run out of money. Everything's gonna be great. But as soon as you put in a practical rate of return over time, all of a sudden you have a failing grade. So if you want real numbers, you have to make sure what they're actually plugging into these, these plans for you, right? In order to let you know it's okay to retire. You know, there's a lot of people locally here in Cleveland that are you know, probably gonna lose their jobs at United you know, I was just talking to one of my clients today and people are like panicking. They don't know what to do. Some of these people are being told that, hey, everything's good. But the same person in the same job, similar debt, all of a sudden, like their plans are completely different. Now, and what I mean by that is when I when I put in a real rate of return, let's say that rate of return is 5.9. You're going to average 5.9% year after year after year after year. Here's what your spending is. Here's what your healthcare costs are. Here's what life's gonna look like. And they have a 40% failing rate 
but their friend, same lump sum, lump sum pension, same earnings, similar costs, similar inflations, and their advisor put in a 9% rate of return, and all of a sudden they got a 99. And at 59 years of age, they think they're going to ride off into the sunset. Here's the thing. I was actually very surprised when I came into the industry that people were upset to see a failing plan. When they when their advisor told them, hey, oh, yeah. that you have a failing plan, that they actually physically got upset with that. And let me tell you, it's actually good that an advisor will tell you that some aspects of your plan are not the best because they want you they want to plan for the worst case scenario to happen. Mm -hmm. That's why we run bear market scenarios in our plan saying, hey, what if you lost 20% of your money the first year of retirement? How would that impact your financial plan in the future? And you have to plan for the bad scenarios or the worst case scenarios to happen. And not even that, but use realistic rates of return like Doug was talking about in mm -hmm. the future because you don't want somebody to pat you on the back and say, hey, everything's looking good. You're good to go. You want somebody telling you the opposite saying, hey, these are the holes in your financial plan. Um, you know, the whole in your plumbing, I think the term you like to use a lot. Leaks in, the Leaks in your plumbing, that's right. So Leaks you, in plumbing are terrible. That's right, they are. I've had water problems in my house multiple times. It yeah. stinks. Yeah. So you want the advisor that's going to tell you that rather than everything's good. I've had more people um, get upset with me um, over the years because I'm honest. And if, if, if I'm telling you right now, wouldn't you rather have an advisor be honest with you and hurt your feelings temporarily to help you in a long term financially, right? I'd, I'd seriously, it, like, I, I would rather just be honest. And I don't think enough people are honest when it comes to people's finances. They sugarcoat things. And some things you just shouldn't sugarcoat. No. Right? You need to plan for the future. Yeah. And again, I'd rather hurt your feelings today to make you happy tomorrow. Yeah. Right? And make sure your assets last all the way through retirement. I right. mean, that is the key is to, if you are 80 years old and you run out of assets, you mm -hmm. know, there's nothing else you can do. You're out of money. You know, there's no going back. They like, don't hire 80 year olds anywhere. I just don't think so. Maybe cool. what, like greeters, maybe at Walmart. I don't no, know. Something, they're, something the like only that. place that I know that hires 80 year olds is the local Ace Hardware in Independence, Ohio. Oh, yeah? And these guys know everything. Yep. And so it's the only place I've ever been where they've got the old timers that like, you know, the last generation that actually knew how to fix everything. Yep. You could walk in and be like, I've got this thing. And you start describing it and they start walking. And they know and exactly I, what you're talking about. I didn't even about. finish talking about, but this guy's like, all right. I, I know what you need. And then he hands you a bunch of stuff and goes, you use that, you mix that, you hammer that, you, you chisel that, and you put some duct tape and then you put a blow dryer on it and all of a sudden you've built a house. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, it's they're typically not giving jobs to 80 year olds anywhere. Right, so there's no going back. So that's why it's better to be honest. No, the only, only place I wanna go back to right now is the beach. That sounds like a good, uh, good place I, to be right hey, now. You know, <laughs> was, was that a segue of, or me? Because. <laughs> Hey, because of social distancing and all of that, and I'm 60, I have to do this show from my house. So you were talking in the break, Doug, about going on a vacation. Right. What commercial came up while you were talking? That's right. Beaches.com. Beaches.com. It did? Yeah. They're listening to us. Are they? <laughs> Absolutely. Or, I mean, Absolutely. it came up on your, your computer. That's vacation. Google for you. That's why the uh, they're getting investigated it, right now, it, too. So it's that's creepy. another topic. It's getting. creepy. <laughs> It's like I'm sitting in my house sometimes and like, you know, maybe I got a little like acid reflux from the chili I just made. Yep. And all of a sudden an acid reflux commercial comes <laughs> on. I'm like, what is happening here? How do they know that I need Tums? Yeah. And that's the day and age it's we live in now. It's really creepy. But then again, I just, I don't care. If someone really is taking the time to see what I'm talking about in my house. It's usually me talking to myself about something that I have to clean up or fix yeah. that my kid destroyed. You know, and it's not that like she's even that destructive, but like, you know, everything from three foot down has just got like a, a film, you know, like, you know, where she's standing there watching TV and like mushing a blueberry into the wall. You know, I, I find blueberries, grapes, like parts of bananas. I mean, at least she's eating kind of healthy occasionally. You're making me hungry now. Doug. Yeah. My, my favorite, hey, I don't know if anyone can appreciate this, is when she spills like her Reese's Puffs cereal. And you're walking in the dark and you just hear that crunch <laughs> and you just mush it into your carpet. That's that's always you a good time. You can't get it out. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm constantly just walking around and like I clean the floors probably every three days on my hands and knees, um, mold school. Um, and I it doesn't matter. I'm constantly finding stuff on the floor. But anyways, yeah, if, I even think one time I was cleaning and I got up and went to the other room and it was like a pine salt commercial came on. I'm like, this is weird. You know, so getting back to vacations, the one exciting thing going completely off topic is 
I finally been given a remote go ahead to look at a vacation that isn't Hilton Head. Hilton Head is where I normally go, but because we have Olivia, um, Tamara's not too excited about driving 12 hours, and that's if we drove straight through. Yeah. So I've been given if we can do it like in eight hours, and I've come to the conclusion that Ocean City, Maryland is eight hours. I love Ocean City. That's my place to go. It's, it'll work. It'll it'll work for me. I need the ocean. I need to wake up. I need my coffee, and I need waves. As long as there's crab legs and lobster t- lobster tail, I'm good. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> See, but talking about you can go on. When do you think you could go on this vacation? Me and probably in the next month. I don't month. think you can just go jump in a car and drive across state lines. Well, I'm supposed to go to Vegas in July. No, we, we can travel. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, they're, they're open. They're. I mean, I'm going to go north of the boardwalk. I'll tell you that much because they're already complaining. Last weekend, the boardwalk was swamped with people. So, you give it about you know end of June is when I'm looking to go to get out of Dodge. Okay um but yeah normally i run a condo um it's got to be a pool got to be right next to the beach and I, I i i do all the cooking anyways when we go to hilton head we might eat out you know a few times um, but otherwise it's it's all me cooking and swimming pools but you know what doug i'm gonna say it what? you know what you know vacation's the longest in your life oh god it's retirement i quit <laughs> this show's over it is and i don't want to talk to this guy people again. Pl- uh, spend more time planning for that vacation than yeah, you do planning for the retirement no i've been saying that for almost two decades i stole it from you yeah two yeah. decades <laughs> this nonsense of people stealing my lines i invented it <laughs> you did no i probably heard it from someone else probably. too <laughs> It gets passed down over the years. Right. So, yeah, no, we're, we're over here talking about vacations and trying to get out of Dodge. I'm sure a lot of people are excited that some of, um, you know, these restrictions are being lifted where they can go out and get their hair done and get their nails done. I know my mother-in-law tried to book every possible appointment possible from my understanding. She's trying to get her hair done and her nails done. And, I mean, I, I'd like a pedicure. Let's be honest. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm not going anytime soon. I'll let the, everyone else run out first, and I'll get my feet done in probably two months. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, but anyways, this is yeah, this is a financial show, and I'm talking about getting a pedicure. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, let me ask you, um, if there's anything you could do right now without restriction um, that you normally would be doing, when you're nor- what do you miss the most? Because we know you golf, right? But is there anything else that like you really miss right now? You know, I always enjoyed going to a sports bar, watching a sporting event with my buddies and having a couple beers. That, I miss doing that. That is, um, you know what? I, I have a group of friends um, in the Lakewood. Well, they used to be in the Lakewood area. And like every Sunday, you could show up at like McCarthy's Ale House, I think it was called at the time. And there would be like eight of them there. They all played fantasy football. You could show up at any point during the day. You know, if the Browns played at 1 o'clock, you'd get there at 1230, get your seat, get your food ordered. But it was like it was like a good time just to hang out and talk, you know, talk shop with the guys, you know. I agree immensely. Like, it's surprising how valuable that interaction with people is just to hang out and talk shop yeah, about I, sports. I can't get my wing nights Mondays and Tuesdays and watch sports anymore. It's uh, been detrimental to my sanity. <laughs> no, your cholesterol is thanking you. Trust me. True. Trust me. This this kid eats horrible. No, we're not talking about spam again. We talked about that last week. This kid eats horrible. It's, everything's fried. And he's like, well, I'm on this special diet. Grilled chicken and rice now. Oh, Transition. Well, I'm excited that you've stopped eating everything <laughs> fried. Um, so anyways, you, you missed going out and just watching a good old game with your buddies. Right? Absolutely. Right. And, yeah. and Luke misses hot wings. <laughs> That's right. Garlic parm. Yeah, I man, I'll be honest, like uh, during all this, you know, with dealing with a lot of the Zoom meetings that we've been doing uh, with people in order to do the retirement plans and get their investments. And I spent half of my day um, just with technology. Um, in, in all honesty, like um, lately, I've actually enjoyed doing home projects, which is, I don't know, maybe because it's mindless work, but building that tower um, swing set thingy for Olivia that I now have 12 hours into it kind of a welcome distraction to go out there and get splinters in my hand and you know drop wood on my feet etc it's, it's a good time if you ask me i don't mark have you ever built a swing set um i try not to you try not to <laughs> i want when i go to buy those things i want them done already my my own, deliver it intact. My, my uncle jim built one for um, my cousin um has twins and he built one and i watched him when he unloaded this stuff and I watched him do this and he told me how long it took and he told me 
um, what a nightmare it was to put this stuff together. And I still went out and bought one from Menards and, um, and, and assembling it. Uh, so I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. You know what I yeah, mean? I have no handyman skills, so I don't None. even. I have. I bought some doorknobs to change a couple doorknobs so they would work better. Typical, typical quarterback. The QB. Yeah. My, yeah. He can pass. Exactly. He we're, can, supposed to, we're supposed to be people around us to do <laughs> yeah. those kind of no, things. No, we're handsome. We, we throw the ball to where it's going, and that's about it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Looking Absolutely. like Joe Namath in the 70s. Stud. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So we, So here's the deal. Yeah. If you have questions or concerns about, hey, the markets are going where? What about the restaurant industry? What about travel industry? What about all the challenges? 100,000 plus small businesses are out of business and are not coming back. What in the world should we be doing now? We want to make sure that we're able to retire this year, next year, five years from now, 10 years from now. What should we be doing right now to take some control of something that we can take control of? Call Doug and the team at Strategic Wealth Partners, 216-800-9890. There's no cost for this phone call. It could be a Zoom meeting, whatever you prefer, 216-800-9890. And of course, you can always go to the website. You can do a couple of those things, the Wealth Allies, the Portfolio X-rays, trg.swpconnect.com. You can also book your appointment with Doug right there as well, mm -hmm. trg.swpconnect.com. We're headed to our final segment. Stay with us. This is The Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. Glad you're with us today for The Retirement Guys with Doug Harbaugh and Luke Lloyd with Strategic Wealth Partners. I'm Mark Elliott. We've been talking about a lot of things. We've been talking about vacation. We've talked about swing set uh, construction, if you will. <laughs> Uh, but really, we started this show talking about the markets. Right. The markets, everybody thinks, hey, the markets are doing great right now. Well, they're actually about where they were a month ago. Then they went down, then they came back. But they're not. we're not even close to where we were just two months ago. So I think it's whether we look at things realistically or we just look at things with hope. I mean, we love to have hope for sure. But you think about this, Doug, with 100,000 plus small companies out of business not coming back, there are a lot of question marks going forward with our economy, isn't there? Right, right. And that's why you have to ask yourself, do you believe it would be a complete waste of time, of your time, to spend an hour talking to me where I would put together a detailed financial analysis for you that lets you know, you know, if there's some changes that need to be done, right? And that's what you need to ask yourself, you know, with all the craziness going on, is it a waste of time to spend an hour with a team of specialists, whether it be it on the phone or, or during a Zoom meeting to figure out, am I okay? Or maybe I'm not okay, and here's the changes that I need to make as an individual in order to succeed in life financially. And that's, that's what we need to talk about um, you know, within ourselves to go, man, I, I know I'm, I'm not used to change. I've been working with this guy for 25 years. You know, I've survived all these markets, but you know what, you're in the ninth inning of life. Right, you're you're rounding third, you know, the outfielder just got the ball and if you're a foot off, that outfielder is going to throw you out at home plate. That's right. We live in this world of technology and right. information, right? right? But sadly, a lot of people still aren't informed or don't have all the information that they right. need to make the well-informed decisions for their situation. Right. And that's what you're talking about, right? You can never have enough information. You might get some good information, you might get bad information, but Anyway, it's still good just to have all the information for you to t digest and understand so you, you can pick the best information within that broad scale information and do the best with your situation. So, so speaking of um, reactive, right, mm -hmm. a lot of advisors make changes reactively, which is not good. Yeah. You need to be proactive in your investment holdings. What if you would have reacted to the big drop in the market at 30% and sold when it was at the bottom? Oh, you would have just been out of it the been whole rebound because it rebounded in two weeks. It would have been terrible. So uh, some of the things I've heard recently from people are, I talked to my advisor and he uh, told me, um, well, you know, we're, we're supposed to be set up one way. The, it's a little down more than I expected. And now we'll make some changes. Are you kidding me? You're making changes afterwards? So I'm actually hearing that People have been with someone for 20, 25 years, and the advisor has done nothing and has only begun to do something after they called their advisor to find out what's happening. That's unacceptable. You need to make sure what you have in your portfolios. I say it every week to call me. 
I will let you know what's in your portfolios for free. I will let you know the good, the bad, and the ugly. Maybe it's all good. Great. Stay with your guy. But man, you really need to test what these guys are doing for you because I hear it time and time again that the only time these people made any kind of changes, it was a reactionary change to their investment mix based on a phone call to the advisor because the advisor didn't even call their clients, which is ridiculous, right? It's all about communication. We're looking at a real estate environment especially when it comes to office buildings, that could feasibly collapse. We could have multiple REITs crashing. These REITs, right, that hold these office buildings, right, that receive rents. Well, we're in an economy right now where people are discovering that they can work from home. We have leases coming up. And when these leases come up, there's going to be tens, hundreds of thousands of square footage going away because no one wants to rent it anymore because they realize their call center could be ran out of these people's houses for a fraction of the cost. Did you see that in New York, the leases on restaurants? I mean, over 50% weren't even able to pay their lease on their right. rent. So, I mean, these real estate, uh, you know, commercial real estate especially, is going to be affected by this. Right. It's, it's a huge problem. And I know you people have REITs out there. They're in your portfolios. Why don't you call your advisor and ask them what the read holds? I bet you they can't give you a good answer and why you're even in it. Oh, it pays high dividends, does it? What happens when these office spaces no longer are receiving rent? What happens to that REIT that owns all these properties? It goes down. <laughs> it goes down a lot, right? And it's okay to hold real estate, but you gotta hold the right real estate. But we have a problem right now economically that sure, in the short term can be fixed with some of, of the stimulus that's happening. But again, there's a huge, huge disconnect between what's happening in the economy, which contracted by nearly 5% in Q1, right? And now they're talking about 30, 40% yep. contraction in the overall GDP of the economy. And you guys are still hanging on to that old advisor, wondering what he's gonna do after you call him. If you're in that circumstance, this is why you need to call me, 216-800-9890, and get an analysis done. Let me show you where you stand and how I can prepare you to move forward in a better position, okay? Don't sit back anymore. Don't sit on your hands. Don't. You shouldn't be calling your advisor. Your advisor should be calling you to let you know what's going on in your world, period. There's so many problems economically right now. I'm shocked at where the market market is today. That's why I started singing today, and that's why I asked you at the beginning of this program that where was the market two weeks ago? Oh, precisely where we are today. But it does not feel that way. After a 4% run-up in one day. Yep. So that means the market's done nothing for two weeks other than be volatile. Yep. Sounds exciting to me. It's not a good time to be setting it and forgetting it. Right. Right? Well put, Doug. Well, I'm glad I put something right. <laughs> 216-800-9890. If you'd like to sit down with Doug and talk about where you are in your road to retirement, should you be being proactive right now, or should you wait till October and November when we get through all this and we'll see where it all shakes out? I don't think that's the way to go. Be proactive. Try to control some of the things that you actually can control. We can't control Washington. We can't control our governments. They're going to do what they do. But we need to control what we can control at this time. 216-800-9890. And, of course, you can also set an appointment on the website, trg.swpconnect.com, trg.swpconnect.com. And there's also those two free tools on the website, Wealth Allies, which simply measures how effectively you're managing your wealth. There's the Portfolio X-Ray that measures the strength of your stock portfolio by scoring your top 10 stock holdings in three critical, three critical categories. That is all on the website as well, trg.swpconnect.com. So is there any hope for that swing set for Olivia being finished this weekend? Um, actually, yeah. I'll be honest with you. It, it, we have a couple. You got 12 hours in. I got 12 hours in, but I'm starting to understand how the thing goes together. So the primary structure of this thing was nuts. Um, but you know, I've, now that I've got the A-frame with the two by six by 10 um, doubled up um, ridge beam put together and lag bolted to my tower um, and the slide up, all I need to do is build the monkey bars, the climbing wall and the steps. You had to take it apart and put it back together, didn't I, you? I did, I did. Um, but that was on a heavy allergy day 
And by the end of the day, I, we were both kind of staring at it going, something's off. <laughs> and again, I was standing there about 11 o'clock at night with the directions. And um, I had just poured myself a Manhattan. And I'm standing there staring at it. And it took a sip of a Manhattan and an, me staring at it for half an hour at 11 o'clock at night and staring at the directions to figure out <laughs> that we mounted the one deck um, about four inches off. That's better than I could do, though, because I couldn't even put it together in the first place. Right, right. <laughs> Luke, Luke. So, You've hit your you've hit your time, by the way. So now yeah. you could just wrap it up. I don't want to wrap it up. So, it, anyways. So, anyways, I don't want to bore people with uh, swing set talk anymore. But obviously, give me a call 216-800-9890. I'm, I enjoy talking to you guys every week. Go to trg.swpconnect.com. Enjoy the sunny weather. We'll talk soon. Take care.